Okay, welcome back. So, uh, we were in, in the discussion mode for uh, 3, 5 or compound semiconductor devices. Uh, today and this lecture and maybe perhaps the next lecture we shall wrap up the part for uh, compound semiconductor. So, if you recall whatever we have studied till now, we introduced different kinds of compound semiconductor. I told you that you can change the band gap, you can tune their band gap and other properties uh, and that also depends on the material science because uh, in practically you have to grow the material with different lattice constant, different band gap by changing the aluminum mole fraction for example in aluminum gallium arsenide or aluminum gallium nitride. Uh, we have discussed about grading of the band gap, heterostructure band diagrams, how to draw PN junctions uh, of band uh, of different materials uh, that, have, that have different band gaps. We also discussed about the different kinds of band alignments, staggered, straddling and broken. I have taken some examples of PN junctions. I also told you that different devices need this uh, you know heterojunction because you have far more flexibility and freedom in designing different devices optical or electronic devices compared to silicon because you can change the band gap and hence the properties and also the heterostructure is a very rich area of you know research where you can do lot of these new devices. I told you that uh, one of the good examples of heterostructure devices is a modulation doped FET uh, with which we concluded last lecture if you remember. Uh, modulation doped FET or HEMT high electron mobility transistor is a classic example of a, of a new type of transistor. It is not new now of course, it has been many decades old now. It is a type of transistor which is different from silicon MOSFET uh, in that your uh, channel charge is physically separated from the doping, doping uh, dopants uh, and so you have very high mobility because the scattering is low and also you can confine them in something called a quantum well. So, we will quickly again recap that uh, transistor called MOTFET and from there I shall go to uh, how wide band gap devices can help in or different band gap devices can help in HBT, where are those devices used in real life and then I uh, will also touch base on how this can be used for heterojunction uh, devices like optical devices, LEDs and so on, so on and from there we shall start a few lectures on optical devices, okay that is the plan. So, let us come back to where we ended in the last lecture. So, if I uh, if you recall I told you that there is this device uh, called MODFET modulation doped FET or you can call it high electron mobility transistor HEMT. Essentially what happens is that you have a, you have a layer of um, very highly doped gallium arsenide okay, and then you have a doped layer of aluminum gallium arsenide and then you have a layer of undoped aluminum gallium arsenide undoped and then you have a layer of undoped gallium arsenide. Uh, these layers are very thin epitaxial layers, this is like a substrate, this is like a substrate so this is very thick ok. Uh, essentially what happens is that you want to make an uh, source drain contact here I told you, the source drain contact will be here very good and then you will essentially uh, what you will do is that you will you will etch away the middle region so that you only have a region like this right, you will have a region like this. So, your gate will come here and the gate will be on top of your uh, L gas that is doped right and then th there is L gas which is also undoped. Uh, the composition of aluminum and gallium can be adjusted depending on how much you need and of course, there will be a very high density of electron gas that forms here, it is called the two dimensional electron gas that is the channel. So, the dopants are here, the N plus dopants are here, this layer is very thin and it is undoped, it is called spacer layer, this physically separates the dopant layer from the channel layer. Okay, it can be few nanometer to 10 nanometer for example thick. Uh, so, how the band diagram looks like along this direction? You know I told you that there is a Fermi level, there is a Fermi level in equilibrium I am drawing it right and then this is your gate that is there right. So, the gate has a Fermi level, metal Fermi level there, it looks like this right. So, essentially what happens is that this is your uh, doped N, N type L gas layer and this is your um, uh, thin spacer layer. Okay, that essentially physically separates, there is an electron gas here, very high density of electron gas, I call it 2D electron gas. The electrons have come from this donor atoms here, you have doped this layer, no? you have doped this layer, so all these donors have donated the electrons, they actually come here, Okay, they, they come here and they form this very high density of charge and this layer, the separate few nanometer layer L gas, this basically separates this donor, uh, this donor ions from the uh, charge here, so the scattering is low and hence mobility is very high mobility is high, I told you, you know, you can get 7000 or 8000 centimeter square per volt second room temperature mobility, very high mobility can be achieved in this kind of structure, that is why it is called high electron mobility transistor and the reason it is called a mod fat is because it is modulation doped, you are doping it here, you are doping it here, right, you are doping it here, but your uh, channel is forming here. So, this is called modulation doping, okay, 
it's you are called modulation you are modulating the doping essentially you are changing the doping here and you are getting a charge here okay so that's why it's called modulation doping of course you cannot dope this region very high otherwise the formula level will come very close and you will get a parasitic channel like uh, an extra channel in this dope layer you don't want this dope layer to conduct also right so you have a very good charge density the typical charge density the 2d charge density is called ns typically and it's in the range of 4 into 10 to the power 12 per centimeter square uh, so this is an epitaxial interface here so the mobility is very high the interface scattering is low um, and you can get good currents good linearity and stuff like that so this is a high electron mobility transistor of gallium arsenide that is widely used in rf in rf transistors especially in rf power amplifiers okay you know rf power amplifiers are those uh, devices uh, essentially they have devices plus other passives which essentially amplify your rf signal for example your cell phone has to reach you know if you have a cell phone it has to re the antenna has to receive the signal from the nearest base station the signal becomes very weak when it receives so you have to amplify the signal of course there will be low noise amplifier power amplifier it has to process and then it has to send back again by you know the another antenna you have to it has to send back to the nearest base station you need to boost up the power and send stuff like that so there's a power amplifier power amplifiers rf power amplifier so it's in the tr module transceiver receiver module uh, so those tra tra transceiver receiver modules in your uh, uh, you know smartphones could be either made of this kind of uh, high electron mobility transistor made of gallium arsenide or it can be made of hbt heterojunction bipolar transistor even there you might be using indium phosphide or gallium arsenide sort of an hbt uh, these are essentially compound semiconductor devices that are enabling these efficient performances in your cell phones and other kind of gadgets where you need RF uh, signals and even of course places like radar wherever you need very high RF power and amplification you, you in take places like radars or satellites for satellite communications you use this kind of gallium arsenide MOSFET because uh, you, you know it can compared to silicon it, it's, its mobility is high its mobility is high its velocity also is very high it can have much higher cutoff frequency there is something called uh, cut off frequency uh, cut off frequency that is the frequency up at up to the maximum frequency up to which it can deliver gain uh, one is called ft which is the current gain cut off frequency um, so this kind of gallium arsenide indium phosphide sort of devices can actually give you much higher ft and hence much higher gain than silicon devices so uh, silicon devices are of course cheaper relatively but you know if you want very good performance for example then this kind of devices can give you a good rf output power essentially your rf signal will be say few gigahertz you know there are different bands you can have between 1 to 2 gigahertz these are different bands that are split up 1 to 2 gigahertz this is i guess l band s band uh, this is l band uh, this is s band then 4 to 8 gigahertz this is called c band these are actually different classifications and then 8 to 12 gigahertz this is called x band and so on so these are different bands in rf frequencies and when, what i mean is that the signal has to come at that high frequency and in your transistor this signal will be fed into your gate of the transistor right so essentially it's not a simple thing you have this source here your drain here right and then your gate sits here essentially your electron gas is here right so this is a transistor your gate that is there no in the gate you feed the small signal okay and if you bias the gate of course at a dc voltage and you you feed the small signal at the gate so this is the drain current right this is the drain current that goes this drain current can be modulated with this small signal you can get a large signal gain here so you use that for rf signal amplification and this kind of gallium arsenide devices would perform superior to silicon mosfet in terms of rf signal amplification at these very high frequencies of x band and even higher frequencies for example you know 12 to 18 gigahertz is called q band for example all this area you know all these high frequencies gallium arsenide devices really perform well and that's why they have been dominating this landscape for a long time um, also please remember that this kind of devices of gallium arsenide the 2d electron gas this electron gas is always there even if you apply zero voltage on the gate i told you this before in the last class also that's why these are called depletion mode devices devices in which the charge exists uh, at zero gate voltage or you know if you keep the gate floating and you apply source drain voltage you will get very high current because the channel is on these are called depletion mode devices um, and if the channel is not on and in many of the silicon mosfet for example at zero voltage on the gate your channel inversion does not form those are called enhancement mode devices or e mode devices or called normally off devices same thing actually okay um, so silicon mosfets and mosfets could be normally off uh, most of the time because your if you recall your silicon mosfet classes at zero gate voltage you will not invert the channel you have to apply some positive threshold voltage like say 0 0.5 volt to invert the channel so at zero voltage you know if you draw a silicon mosfet id the channel current versus vg 
you know at zero voltage on the gate you will have nothing and then you will have this is the threshold voltage at which the current starts unlike that in this kind of gallium arsenide devices you have very high charge density at zero uh, gate voltage so you have to apply some minus 2 or minus 3 volt actually to turn it off and then at zero voltage it has very high current so this kind of devices are called depletion mode devices um, and this is one of the many examples of heterojunction devices that are used widely used in modern day electronics especially rf electronics and in devices that require amplifier uh, in amplification also there's another uh, that, is, that is heterostructure based devices is called mod fed uh, there's a lot of physics of course behind it uh, uh, on this electron gas that forms and also of course a lot of mathematical expressions as to how you can this is a charge that is formed below the gate it's called ns the 2d electron gas how is the charge controlled by the gate voltage right it is a function of the gate voltage so there are mathematical expressions behind this uh, that depends on the doping density that you are using in the barrier layer that is the spacer thickness and so on uh, that those if you are interested you know you can ask me email me and i can send you texts and textbooks and other things that you can read but this is not uh, we will not go to the mathematics right now here another very important devices is uh, compound semiconductor device that is widely used is gallium arsenide MOSFET. Uh, gallium arsenide MOSFET MOSFET actually stands for metal semiconductor transit uh, field effect transistor metal semiconductor field effect transistor and this is not modulation doped it is basically what happens is that you have a lightly doped uh, an n minus a lightly doped gallium arsenide region which could be say you know around 60 nanometer or maybe 100 nanometer when I say lightly doped you might be using something like say 8 into 10 to the power 17 per centimeter cube maybe that is the doping maybe and this is the thickness this is of course in undoped gallium arsenide substrate on top of which you grow this uh, mildly doped thing and then of course you grow very thick a uh, very uh, do highly doped n plus gallium arsenide to make contact so that you can make a source contact n plus essentially this is very highly doped you make drain contact you know your contact resistance has to be low otherwise when you apply this is ground of course when you apply voltage and you have a current that flows lot of voltage uh, will unnecessarily drop across this contacts so you do not want the contact resistance to be bad and hence why you may and, and that is the reason why you put an n plus layer here and here so that your contact is good your contact resistance is low and of course it is grown everywhere it is grown everywhere you just etch it away here over here you etch it away and you put it a gate here okay a gate you put you you etch away you etch away this region okay this region say because the gate you do not want to put on n plus otherwise the gate will leak the whole premise of a field effect transistor is that the gate should not leak it should be an insulating gate okay so the gate will deplete the this area no so this area will be depleted by the gate as you apply more negative voltage it will basically deplete this and this depletion will what will happen because of depletion the charge that is flowing from the source and the drain this channel length will basically this thickness of the channel length will reduce right so it will deplete some area so it will deplete some area below here as you increase the gate voltage so your uh, the path that the current flows this channel this thickness reduces right so your current can be modulated by the gate voltage as you keep applying more and more gate voltage you will actually deplete more and more so your uh, what happens is that the channel becomes even even tinier at one point you will be such that you will apply such a higher gate voltage that the entire will be depleted it can be depleted okay and then your channel will be pinched off and then your essentially channel is turned off okay it is pinched off as in, in the sense key your channel has at a very high negative voltage your device has stopped working I mean the current has become off because the current now cannot flow here it is gone and this is insulating so it will not go there. So this is how you basically get the IDVD characteristics you know IDVD characteristics at a negative voltage you will eventually be not able to conduct okay at a negative voltage you will not be able to conduct. So because the channel thickness is gone again if you want to conduct you will apply you will apply a lesser negative voltage so the depletion is like that and your current can go again this way okay that is called a, like a mass fat of course there is another variation called j fat in which instead of a this is a short key barrier you are using here to actually deplete this is a short key barrier depletion in j fat you can use a p type junction here to deplete that is also similar do not worry about that so much um, but this mass fat you know this mass fat you are using this is also used very widely for rf linear applications um, that li li require linearity uh, you know this uh, MOSFET is basically having a n minus doped layer and this uh, sort of a device can actually uh, freeze out at very low temperature like 4 Kelvin or so this carrier concentration will reduce because uh, carrier freeze freeze out will happen so MOSFETs are not preferred to be operated at very low temperature but a mod fed you remember the mod fed band diagram I told you it is like this right the Fermi level is here you see the Fermi level is going above the conduction band so you have an electron gas here whenever your Fermi level crosses the conduction band and you have an electron gas like 2D electron gas here uh, if you recall the band diagram from here right this is the this is 
this is your uh, this is your band diagram right if you recall and this is your Fermi level your Fermi level is crossing above the conduction band here uh, this is 2D electron gas right this this does not freeze out this does not freeze out it stays constant because your Fermi level is above the conduction band here the conduction band is gone below this is a degenerate electron gas you can say and this does not freeze out in the low temperature. So, mod fat can be used at very low temperature also even low as low as 1 Kelvin or 4 Kelvin uh, and in fact at low temperature your mobility will become better in this kind of devices. Uh, so, you get higher current uh, in this mod fat so this mod fat and mass fat are two different kinds of devices in a way please remember also that when you have a, a mod fat like that. I know let me draw the Fermi level here this is Fermi level E f metal here and then uh, I draw I had drawn the band diagram like this of course, your valence band also will look like this ok this is your conduction band this is your valence band of course, and this is the Fermi level right this is the Fermi level. So, uh, the reason you know there is a Fermi level is going above the conduction band and there is this electron gas I keep this is a wave function actually of the electron gas I keep drawing like this this is electron gas is called two dimensional electron gas the reason it's called two dimension is because this electron can only move in two direction which is x and y it cannot move in this z direction this is the z direction ok uh, this is energy of course so this is energy you cannot visualize x here but essentially what happens is that this electron gas can only move in two direction which is x y the plane of the wafer it cannot move in the z direction that is in the direction of the growth of the wafer the thickness of the wafer because there is a barrier here this barrier see this barrier will essentially prevent it and there is a barrier here this is a quantum well essentially the quantum wells can be of different shapes and sizes this is a quantum well formed at heterostructure interface and it is called a triangular quantum well it is called a triangular quantum well because it is like a triangle remember I told you you can have this kind of square quantum wells this is E c this is E v right I told you this can be a you can have sub band levels like E 1 E 2 which you studied in high school about potential in a periodic you know sorry particle in a box it can be physically realized in a heterostructure I told you this is like a square quantum well right this is like a square quantum well that can be formed also from heterostructure only different kinds of heterostructure. But in this uh, gallium arsenide modulation doped or hemmed this is a hemmed right here the tri quantum well that is formed is a triangular quantum well because it looks like a triangle of course and it is a quantum well in quantum well carriers are confined ok carriers are confined in uh, in only in two dimensions. So, in x and y in the plane of the device it can uh, move, but vertically in this direction it cannot move in the z direction because there is a confinement here this confinement this confinement will not allow the electrons to move. So, unlike in a bulk semiconductor so if you take you know a bulk semiconductor for example, I am taking a bulk semiconductor here right. Uh, I am taking a bulk semiconductor here which is say n minus doped gallium arsenide or something carriers the carriers that are here can move in all direction x uh, this is z you know x y in all direction carriers can move if you apply a voltage in a way. But here if you even if you apply a voltage in this direction you know carriers cannot move. So, what I am trying to say is that if I take an example of a, a gallium arsenide wafer I am drawing a square but actually wafer in a device can be anything. So, this is the top suppose. Um, this is the top suppose uh, L gas layer right this is the top L gas layer and then below it you will have uh, uh, the gallium arsenide layer here again right. If this is the top L gas layer L aluminum gallium arsenide layer suppose and the bottom is the gallium arsenide layer then essentially you will have a uh, 2D electron gas just below here no 2D electron gas below at the interface ok this is the 2D electron gas that I am talking about this is the z direction of growth this is the direction in which you are depositing the material layer by layer because this is the wafer and this is the direction in which you are growing the material. So, it cannot the electrons cannot move in this direction in this z direction the electrons cannot move because there is a barrier here this this is interface is actually a barrier here electrons can only move in x direction and y direction ok. That is why it is a two dimension electron gas unlike in mass fat this happens in a mod fat or a hemp ok. Uh, so, that is why it carrier this is called carrier confinement ok. So, that is uh, one of the classic examples and then if you recall our BJT discussion if you recall I had you know many lectures back we had discussed BJT suppose this is your Fermi level and you have I was talking about a silicon NP and BJT right. Uh, this is a NP and BJT and P and the same band gap of course. If you recall the doping here was N D and the doping here was N A and in forward bias the way you operate B J T is that you forward bias the base emitter junction here 
right if forward bias the base emitter junction here so the electrons are injected here holes are back injected and the idea is that electrons have to diffuse and essentially go here and get collected this part is reverse biased okay so they will be swept away by the field here and they will be collected the problem here of course was that you don't want this back injected component to be more because this back injected component doesn't contribute to gain or do anything you only want that injected electrons should be very high whereas the back injected electrons uh, holes should be very low and that's why you need to dope it very high n plus and you need to dope it low so that if this doping is very high say 10 to the power 18 per centimeter cube and if this doping is very low say 10 to the power 16 per centimeter cube then the current that you are injecting this side due to electrons will be at least 100 times more than the electrons that the holes that you are injecting this side so that is why you have an n plus region p region here but if you dope this high uh, you know you cannot keep doping it high because one to hecky your base resistance increases because if you dope it low uh, that base resistance increasing you know your gain will suffer eventually. Uh, not your gain but your uh, power gain power performance will suffer and a base resistance increase so it will lose the transistor action eventually if the base resistance also is low then you will have early effect if you recall and that early effect will also es essentially deteriorate the device so you do not want the base to be dope light but the moment you dope the base high your emitter you know if it comes equal to almost the emitter doping your gain will not be there because the number of electrons you are injecting this side will be equal to number of holes coming this side it will be very terrible. So, and if you can you cannot dope the emitter very high because after some time the doping is so high that the band gap will narrow, the band gap will shrink. That is why the solution I told you was that in the emitter side here, this emitter and this was also proposed by Shockley and Herbert Cromer. If you if you use the emitter as wide band gap, if you use if you use a wide band gap material on the emitter side, then a lot of these problems will be solved. What I mean by that is that you have suppose the Fermi level here you use a wide band gap material here okay for an n region and then on and you can adjust the doping and the grading between the emitter and the base i told you grading can be done so that things are smooth okay so you can actually have a narrow band gap material on the base side here like this this is the delta ev by the way this is delta ev the discontinuity and the valence band and then you can have something like that and then you can again have sorry the collector here okay so essentially what happens is that this band gap is lower than this band gap. This is called HBT heterojunction bipolar transistor because you are, I had probably told you in the BJT classes also this part that you are grading this part that you are having this uh, uh, heterojunction you can actually do these tricks in heterojunction engineering such that the most of the discontinuity falls across the valence band and very little discontinuity falls across the conduction band because if you do not do this engineering trick then what will happen is that right you will end up getting a discontinuity in both valence and conduction band so it will look like uh, like this okay it will look like this so it will lo look like this and you don't want that kind of a notch here because this is delta ec this is delta ev right conduction and valence band discontinuity these electrons will have this problem uh, you don't want this kind of a structure so what you do is that you make this grading smooth and you can decide the way you grade such that you have a suppose you have a Fermi level here you know you want that the conduction band should have smoothness like this but the valence band should have discontinuity like like this okay the valence band should have discontinuity this discontinuity delta EV and the conduction band discontinuity should be smooth you can do these tricks actually otherwise there will be not also also there will be notch or discontinuity in the conduction band which is not good now the benefit of this is that because this is a wide band gap device your ni is much smaller than much much smaller than the ni here and because of that what will happen is that your gain your gain will increase by a factor of e to the power delta eg by kt okay because of this ni difference because ni depends on eg because the ni there is a difference in the band gap between here and here your ni will be dramatically smaller here and that is why that will manifest itself as a extra in the gain also you can dope this very high now you can dope this very high to have higher gain you can dope this very high even if you dope it very high even if the band gap shrinks that band gap shrinking that band gap shrinking little bit of band gap shrinking will not matter because your delta ev is very large so that is benefit number two benefit number one is that your gain will automatically increase because of this ni difference gain number two is that you can dope very high you can dope the emitter very high i mean to say 
dope emitter very high okay you can dope the emitter very high for a higher injection that means electrons will go better and holes will not come uh, still your band gap narrowing will not affect anything because delta if you will take care of that okay and your gain will automatically be high and the number three is that this holes from the base will not be back injected because there is a barrier here this barrier will prevent the holes from back injecting so holes from base will be blocked will be blocked will be blocked by the delta EV barrier right this barrier will block the holes that uh, the holes that are trying to come so that will even decrease the uh, hole component and your emitter injection efficiency will increase so this HBT and this delta EV by the delta EC total even if this band gap difference is only say 0 0.2 EV or 0 0.3 EV it is exponentially dependent so your gain will increase by e to the power 0 point say 2 by 0 0.026 which is almost e to the power 9 e to the power 9 is like 1000 so your gain will probably increase by 1000 times can you believe that your gain will increase by 1000 times so this hbt's can provide extremely high gain exceptionally high gain extremely high gain okay this can provide extremely high gain also they can provide you very much higher speed higher speed they can provide the reason is you see this this base region you can actually when the electrons drift across the base and I mean you want the uh, transit across the base drift diffusion you can make the electrons move faster across the base by also band engineering this base layer what you do is that you can grade this base layer you can grade this base layer so as to develop a quasi electric field remember I told you in the last class or probably last to last class when you have a grading in the layer your conduction valence band can be slope can be adjusted accordingly because of the gradual change in the band gap it is called grading and that can lead to an additional electric field called the quasi electric field in the base layer which is not possible if the uh, semiconductor has only one band gap then people try to dope it little bit differently from one point you dope it differently to another point so that there is a field but compared to that this is much better you have a quasi electric field you are changing the band gap in a way. Uh, gradually such that there is an inbuilt electric field that is developed here that will make the transit of the electrons even faster and you will get a better in a faster device with much higher gain. So, these devices are typically made up of indium phosphide gallium arsenide sort of structure uh, along with this indium phosphide gallium arsenide HBTs you also have these HEMS that I talked about together with HEMS and HBTs they have dominated the RF landscape for a long time the RF amplifier RF amplification long long time and silicon RF devices are still there please do not get me wrong but device and areas and applications where you need really high performance and these are not that expensive of course uh, means relatively expensive than silicon but all your cell phones for example have this gallium arsenide indium phosphide hems or HBTs of the radars and the satellite communication many of the applications where you have RF device uh, you know sig uh, signal processing you need this uh, HBTs and hems. Uh, and the next incoming 5G technology for example will also depend a lot on HBTs and HEMS of course silicon RF devices silicon RF devices are also competing because they have the cost advantage and integration with CMOS platform you know it is in a CMOS plat platform also has that advantage that because gallium arsenide gallium phosphide platforms are not as high as dense you know as silicon so those are things you should be aware of but anyways these are devices that are very uh, you know widely used. So, what we will do here is that we will wrap up the class here today this lecture here ok. Uh, we will end the lecture here today and in the next lecture we shall start or not we shall start we shall continue a little bit on the, that will be the last lecture on compound semiconductor. I shall introduce very briefly to uh, another class of compound semiconductor called 3 nitrides that you if you recall uh, it is a gallium nitride based technology uh, compound semiconductor the reason I will touch base very briefly on gallium nitride technology is because you should be just aware or just basically be familiar with the very basics of uh, 3 nitride technology they are pervading our lives very much all your white LEDs that you have seen in the shops and street lights and all are made of gallium nitride. So, we should be slightly aware to the very basic minimum if you know someone asks you like why how is this LED working you should be able to tell something. So, we will touch base quickly on gallium nitride materials and devices I will tell you very briefly about the applications that are going on and then that will be the end of compound semiconductor portion ok and from the and then from the next to next class we will start uh, a few lectures maybe 5 6 lectures on optical devices uh, solar cells leds and photo detectors ok that will be the agenda so we'll end up class here i'll hope to see you in the next class thank you